Everybody, it's Tyler here at Space City Signature Event, checking in 166-89A, the Circuit Breakers. And this is one of the more unique robots I have seen here in high stakes so far. A lot of great stuff going on. We'll be talking about, of course, their choice of mechanum wheels, but just overall design philosophy. This team is really trying to hit skills really hard, so we're excited to talk more about how that's all coming to play. But a lot of great stuff. This uh, lifting intake that they have, I'm really excited to talk more about, too. Definitely a lot of great, unique features. Talk about programming and a lot more coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. So Jeremy, let's talk about some of your design philosophy uh, on this robot. Uh, you know, we were talking earlier, I'd love to hear that your team is really trying to hit skills hard, and you just got a lot of great unique stuff on this robot. Tell me more about it. Yes, thank you, Tyler. So I want to talk about the philosophy behind this robot and how, what, the reason why we want to choose Mechanic Drive and why we choose it. So actually, go back to our uh, big, uh, more America competition, we thought that actually we're hitting, we try to hit our skills as high as possible, and but it's the, our uh, intake and all the stuff, it actually is not catch up to our speed of, of uh, our uh, mechanic drive. Therefore, we think that um, we can we can improve a lot of stuff from our more America competition. And then the reason why we choose the scale, because it's, first of all, scale can qualify to a uh, uh, world championship, and also if it high, it's hit a, a high high scale scale rank, also improving our programming scale and it also drive driving as well. So we practice a lot and we we'll try to hit as high, as high as possible on this robot. What uh, what skill are you trying to get up to? Like, what's your skills, so, top skill score in your opinion? Right now, I think we are in like um, ten ish, ten ish skill, and I try to try to hit like at least a one ten and one twenty as high as possible in that what top five at least. Very cool on that. Uh, so you Chen on here, we talked a little bit about the uh, mechanical drive, but I'd love to hear more about like what was it like to try to integrate these types of wheels in your robot and just overall like using mechanum that decision to go that route. Uh, yeah, of course. So we have these four 11 watts motors at the bottom and four 5.5 watts motors on top, and this creates a total of 66 watts. And this uh, motor distribution is kind of perfectly perfectly balanced as we distribute one big and one small motor for each wheel. And the motor the motors are relatively centered so that we create, uh, we save a lot of space on the drivetrain as well. So as you can see, we have a mechanum drive, and this drive is a really unique aspect of our um, robot. So throw back to our research from in the beginning of the season, we know that there are a lot of open space on the field, so we want to choose an all-direction drive because the rings could appear anywhere on the field. Um, actually, for our first robot of the season, we, we tried X-Drive because we thought it would be beneficial for the autonomous round due to its fast speed. Um, however, we realized that because it has a special 45 degree inward angle on all four corners, that leaves um, limited space for both the front and back for the intake and the clamp. And, and also a lot of times we want our robot to be able to move horizontally so that it can match the ring's position and we can improve our, um, the efficiency of the intake. Gabriel, talk to me about how these mechanic wheels do come together here, uh, you know, especially with how you're using your gears. I'm interested to hear more about uh, that. And then uh, a couple other things too, uh, the uh, V-shape I noticed uh, for your mobile goals, love to hear more about that. Yeah, so more about um, the mechanical drive. So I think this will be like one of our most innovative and like the hardest thing to make on this uh, drive train. So um, as you can see here, there are actually aren't any holes here for us to put any screws, screws through. Um, well, there are holes, but um, there aren't any ones to like securely put a screw on. So we actually customized this, uh, this special polycarb so we can uh, uh, safely rest this screw um, on here so that way it won't move around. I like the, the making your own hubs essentially for it. That's pretty cool mm -hmm. yep. on that as well. And then from a design-wise, on here, talk more about this V-shape that you got. Okay, so like more about this V-shape thing. Um, so sometimes uh, we might be like a bit off uh, when we go to do the wall stake, and um, this thing is just to help us uh, like slide into the center so we can make our scoring more efficient. Um, and uh, another thing about this is we have a little space in the middle here. Um, this space in the middle is so we don't have to worry about sometimes closing. Um, we don't have to worry about closing the gold clamp uh, when we when we go score for high stake. And if we ha had to worry about closing the uh, gold clamp, it would waste more air and more time. 
Jeremy, I really like the lifting intake that you have on your robot. I was watching your last match, and like, I mean, not only is it cool, but you are you were able to score wall stakes quite quickly while doing that too. So talk to me more about that. And then one other thing as well, uh, I'd love to hear more about how the string works with your odometry pods too. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. nice. So actually, that's already, we have the two stages of the intake. That's already first stage. So first thing here, you might wondering why we having the polycarbonate here? Because a lot of things using a C channel and other kind of structure, other than just using uh, polycarbonate here. But actually, it's too back to our more American robot. We using the whole the full thing is using the uh, C channel. And it's actually have like three pound or three pound or two point five pound. It's a lot of weight. So, and for this robot, it's already heavy enough since it's a mechanical drive. It's pretty heavy on the drive chain. We want as light as possible. Therefore, we change it to the to the polycarbonate and with the angle chain over here and this triangle structure, actually pretty, pretty strong for uh, for intake in this case. And also, it's fast, due to its polycarbonate, you can, it's flexible, so it's hiding a sideway, actually can reduce the energy from that. Yeah. Let's move on to our second stage intake. The second stage, as uh, Tyler mentioned before, is a lift intake. Over here, this thing, this lift intake, the reason why we choose lift intake instead of using the Lady Brown Mac or other, other different kind of Mac. Because we think that the lift intake, you can lift in whole intake and score the two ring at the same time. This is okay, more efficient, not only for a scale, also for a match. And this, this lift intake, if it's 600 RPM, with a, as you can see here, it's a hook Mac. So with the reason why we choose a hook Mac instead of using the flexio and, or any other types of uh, intake, because we think that hook Mac is actually hook the uh, ring into the goal. And that, that's creating more efficiency. And But in another, another case, for example, like the flexible, flexible intake, sometimes it does actually go into the goal. You gotta wiggle a little bit and then put it in here. So we think that's kind of a waste of time. It turned out the hook max is actually the best solution for this robot. How many charges are you getting out of actually lifting your intake per match? Like how many times can you actually do that? So actually, you can see here, we have a two piston in input over here. It's two, this two is separated out to our two tank. So we so one tank is primary for like our lifting take and our hand. Because our hand mag is only take one times one times for the end game. We don't need that many, many times. So just and we want to save as much as air for the for, for the uh, lifting. Because some lifting is taking like sometimes take like five five psi. Even though we want to save like as much air as possible. See, as you can see here, we have a rubber band to actually help us lift the intake. Because the intake is kind of heavy. Yeah, so the so, so that's why we just so I think I think we'll say like take like five art five psi sure. around that. Yeah. Also, you might wondering why we have this big cover over here. This this big polycarbonate cover over here, and this big cover polycarbonate actually is for our rings to prevent our rings from uh from falling off. So it's due back to our of uh, uh image with our sister thing that if you lift intake. Sorry. So if you leave the fintech, it's pretty pretty easy to fall off. If our sister thing hitting our sideways in any direction, and it's so easy to fall off, and we don't want to happen because we want most efficient as possible. So therefore, in this case, we have this whole cover, and right now, even if you shake a little bit in any direction, anyway, you won't fall off at all. It's performing very, very great. Yeah. Overall, this integration has been phenomenal in this robot. Like I said, I mean, a lot of creative stuff, but very functional as well, too. You know, sometimes we talk to you, it's, it's great in concept, but is isn't really proven. I think your team has done a great job proving that yeah. uh, so far as well. Uh, let's start wrap up. Uh, Stephen, talk to me about uh, programming strategy, uh, how you're uh, implementing it, and uh, really focusing on the field. So in our program, we prioritize our speed very much. Uh, so uh, with our speed, we can get up to 60 points in practice, actually. One of the main components of our program is actually the PID constants. Our PID constants, the goal for that is having the highest combination of KP and KD as possible while still maintaining our overall accuracy. Uh, this allows us to transition from one movement to, the, to another very seamlessly. The next part is about how we avoid stopping and turning uh, because they slow down the robot. And we can achieve this by setting our, our route to just you know, uh, implement as many straight lines and curves as possible. And this works because for our intake, we don't actually have we, we don't actually have to be very accurate in order to get the ring into the intake. So we can just be a bit off and go in a straight line, so we can be faster. Uh, the next part is our odometry. The in, in the back, the, we used one vertic one horizontal and one vertical, and we also have some inertial sensors up here. 
Our DOM sheet allows us to know where we are on the field at all times and move from one place to another very easily. And the sensors that you have on that set helping you compensate for like drift on the odom yes. odometry pods? Yes, it helps a lot. Very cool. Finally, we have the color sensors in the front and, and on the top. Uh, so this color sensor is actually for preparing the two rings for the wall stake and onto the second stage intake. So this um, increases the speed of our wall stake mechanism a lot and is also very useful during driver control. And, and also we have this color sensor up here, which is for, actually for color sorting. Uh, we achieve color sorting by, see, sen by the, the color sensor senses the distance and the color of the ring coming in. And then if, the, if it's a color that we don't want, we move the intake back a bit. And then since the ring still has momentum, the ring will want to fly out and it won't get scored into, into the goal, and we can just keep going with our intake. Well, Circuit Breaker so well, this is a fantastic breakdown, so thank you for doing that. There's a lot of great things that teams can learn from this. Best of luck both in skills and here uh, from a competition standpoint. We can't wait to see how you do. Let's try to qualify for Worlds. So best of luck the rest of the way. Thanks a lot. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected.